Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So a lot of stuff to get over, to go over. So let's just jump right in. And uh, before we get into it, actually, I will just say that uh, I'd like to make this one a little bit quicker so we can spend a little more time on the Q&A part, which I think is, uh, is pretty productive. So real quick, uh, the last 24 hours, we've seen quite a bit of a, uh, a dip, not a big deal. I don't really focus too much on the 24-hour time frame or even the seven-day or even the monthly. I really don't care. But uh, it's 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 worth noting that over at after this uh, Bitcoin convention, we've had quite a bit of a, of a tumble, a tumble downwards. And I know some people will say, well, that's you know that's just par for the course. Me personally, I look at this, I'm like, this is great because this is the time for me to accumulate and wait until 2025. But I will just give a shout out to uh, the, the the very few projects that are in the green over the last 24 hours, not seven days of 24 hours. XRP, if anybody needs a win. It will be the XRP army for sticking to that project. Sweet Mary and Joseph, good for you guys. Ten coin barely hanging on at 0.7. And Caspa, there was one more. <laughs> Stellar. Eh, go figure. So that's what's going on. But I really want to focus on this. I was just taking a look at what was happening in the crypto and digital asset space today. We're going to talk about uh, what happened with the SEC versus Binance case. And now people are assuming that what they are saying is that now these specific cryptos are not securities, which I will tell you that I don't think that's what it is. We'll also take a look at uh, Solana overtaking Ethereum in fees and some other metrics. And also we'll take a look at some ETFs, what's going on. But to me, this is the story. And the story is, is that right now, I know everybody wants, would like to go up as fast as possible, but I just feel like we're in the right we're exactly where we're supposed to be in this time frame. And I know everybody will say, well, this time is different because we were all jazzed up about, you know, the ETFs being gobbled up by BlackRock. Of course, Grayscale likes to dump on us, but hey, what are you going to do? And of course, we've, we've had uh, a lot of uh, positive inflows as far as like with uh, the government here in the United States, which I did not have my bingo card for two presidential candidates to go, you know, pretty much uh, full bull on Bitcoin, depending, watch my video yesterday about which one you think, which one I think is the better candidate uh, for crypto. But if we just take a look at this and look, we're looking at just the market cap trend line and just where things are going, we can see that this red line right here would be our fair market value. And this is where we can assume where we can see that this is actually a good point to where we should be in the cycle. Now, as time has gone on, uh, we can see that obviously things have, have gone grossly ahead of, ahead of ourselves. In 2013, we were way ahead of a fair market value. And that's where you probably or will think about selling. Uh, most of you will do it because you've been with me for quite some time. Some of you won't. That's okay. Uh, you know, do what you ever want to do. But uh, then, of course, things cool off and then we go below the trend line, then we go up and go down. It's just like, a, just, it's, it's a constant game. It's a constant game. So when people tell you, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, just tell them to shut their mouth. Just say, you should be quiet because uh, I know what's best for me and my family. So we take a look at this here. Let me just zoom in. I think this is, I mean, they say, when in doubt, zoom out, but sometimes I like to zoom in and really see what's going on today. This is right where we, where we should be. And no matter what you look at as far as like the good positive news we just talked about, where of course you're gonna find that on a lot of channels and the moon boys, or you see about the negative aspects of it, you know, what's going on in uh, the economy here in the United States, globally, the macro environment, are there gonna be rate cuts? Is unemployment actually going up? Looks like it is. And you know, what's going to happen before and after the presidential election? Of course, that could all be negative. It just filters all in. But right now, this is where we're supposed to be at. And if you take a look here, actually, let me reset the zoom. The last, the highest point for our total market cap was roughly around November 10th, correct me in the comments section, maybe 11th November. And the market cap, the total market cap for Bitcoin and all altcoins was around $2.8 trillion. Now the upper band set us to 7.8 and that's where we thought it was going to go because you know, back in 2017, it hit this. So it has to hit this, right? It's not the, that's not how it works. All models are wrong and some are useful. And this one I like to see where we're going. So yeah, it would've been great to get there, but that just wasn't the case. So we came up around here about 2.8 for the total market cap. Now we're coming over here 2024, going into 2025. And I said this many a time, I don't think we're gonna go too far until we figure out who the president's gonna be. Heck, we don't, know, we don't even know who the vice president's really gonna be. Eh, as an update to that later. 
Well, we can just see that the fair market value, 2.72, 2.8. That's where we were at last time. Total market cap right now is around $2.4 trillion. Hold on, excuse me. That can't be right. Yeah, $2.4 trillion. So we're not too far away from where we are at as far as like all-time highs. And if we extrapolate that and just say, okay, if we think about from end to end, from the lows to the highs, where we could potentially see the biggest gains, I still say it's going to be in 2025. If you follow Bob Lucas, he talks about a left translated cycle, but he's already said that he doesn't think it's going to be that way. He thinks we're going to go in 2025. I have to agree with Bob in this one. If we just extrapolate that out and just look at the, the fair market value, just a fair value and go to November. Hell, let's just go to October. I don't care. You're looking at around 4.8 trillion, almost $5 trillion for the fair market value. But as we all know, usually in the blow off tops, as we go forward, we're not just hitting fair market value. We're going a little bit above that. I don't see us going to 36. Geez, we 30. Is that really right? Sweet Mary and Joseph. Yeah. I don't see us going to 43 trillion. Sorry. But, uh, I'm going to give you a price prediction right now. The total market cap of crypto will be somewhere between 1.4, no, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, uh, 1.6 trillion and 44.2 trillion. That's my assessment. But in all honesty, even if we hit a fair market value of around 4.8, 4.9 trillion and roughly five in December, can you imagine what your bags will be worth after you did all that hard work? in the bear market. So again, we're running that line. I hope, I sincerely hope we go below this red line before we go to all time highs, but these are where we want to be. And I think this is good stuff. So we take a look at that. It's great news. You're going to start to hear all types of news moving forward. You're going to start to hear about the Ethereum ETF. And of course, here's the uh, numbers going all the way to 29th July. Looks like we don't have the new ones in. But uh, you can see that so far, the Ethereum ETF hasn't done the greatest. But as a reminder, uh, the Bitcoin ETF, like the first two weeks, wasn't the most stellar. I mean, we had uh, as far as like price appreciation. So for this one, I mean, right now, the total flow, <laughs> thanks to Ethereum yet again, you're looking at a negative, wow, 440, uh, $440 million worth, worth of Ethereum flow. And where is that coming from? You guessed it, the Ethereum Grayscale Fund. And people will say, but Rob, you got to remember that, you know, they're just taking that 2.5% and they're just rolling into 0 0.15 or to a lower, lower fees. No, they're not. They're selling and they're getting the hell out. And that's pretty much what it is. Or maybe they hate everybody and they're going to some other one. Maybe they're, maybe they're going to BlackRock or Fidelity or Bitwise or whatever else. But that still doesn't equate to where we're at right now. People are selling. People are getting out because they're just not happy. That's just what it is. I wish them the best. They got to take profits and get out of here. So we'll see stuff like that. And we'll see I mean, negative news there, positive news over here. ETF Bitcoin flows through uh, July 20th. Let's see. Yeah, 29th of July. Let's say 30th. Yeah. And uh, we had a monster day yesterday. I mean, we had Grayscale, 3,000 Bitcoin. And Grayscale was doing their usual Grayscale-y thing. And if we take a look at it, we're actually today, congratulations, we're at an all-time high for net Bitcoin flows. So the positive and the negative, we're almost at 300,000 Bitcoin. That's amazing. And what's the price doing? Again, this is it. This is why you can't focus too much on price. You just kind of track the goods and the bads and see where things are going. So uh, that is that piece. Let me know you think about that in the comment section. And then um, not to be outdone, I like to give credit where credit is due, which is to Solana. Solana has been one of those projects that uh, keeps making waves. And this was the first time, I think of all time, that Solana overtakes Ethereum in weekly fee revenue for the first time. And I, I'll have to say this, I'd preface it with this, and that is that it's not just Ethereum for the fees. Remember, there's Ethereum layer one, there's Arbitrum and Polygon and, a whole, and Optimism and all those other ones for like layer twos and layer threes. So this, I always read these these snippets of information uh, with a grain of salt because I don't know if they actually included the layer twos and apparently they did. So here's what we got. Coin of Blockworks Research, Solana generated approximately 25 million in revenue. 
during the week of July 22nd, edging out Ethereum's $21 million. That's pretty good. So the breakdown is as such, 58% of the fee revenue came from MEV tips, while 37% was derived from priority transaction fees. The network generated $5.5 million in daily revenue on July 28th, which is the highest in three months. That's pretty good. The network had generated more revenue on July 28th, just on July 28th, than Ethereum, Arbitrum, and Base combined, without including MEV tips. I always also noted that the high trading volumes on Solana DEXs were not genuine. Let me say that again. So we're just talking about fees. We're not talking about trading volumes and things that are going on within the ecosystem. There is to note that high trading volumes on Solana DEXs were not genu genuine, with much of the volume connected to wash trading, which is uh, quite popular and makes things look uh, much more appeasing than they actually are. So I'm glad they actually point that out. Ethereum remains the leader in TVL, holding nearly 60 billion, more than 10 times higher than Solana's roughly five and a half billion. So again, we're making a distinction here between the revenue generated, which if you, if you think about it, uh, we want revenue to be low. I mean, we want the fees to be low, right? But I mean, if you have that high of transactions, if you have, you know, one transaction that costs you a billion, I'm just saying, and then you have, you know, 10 billion transactions that cost you just a penny per transaction, then of course, you know, one is obviously the winner. So what you really want to take a look at is, and there's a uh, link in the description, it's at artemis.xyz and take a look at chains. And if we can do this, we can take a look at daily active addresses and transactions, and we can come down here for fees. So let's just zoom in real quick. So I just took a look at uh, Ethereum, Near, Solana, Base, Ton, Cardano, Polygon, Polygon, ZK, EVM, just, just to name a few. And these are the ones that I picked out just to see what, how many daily active addresses are out there. Now remember, there could be some, some uh, on-chain manipulation, but here's what we have. As of the 29th, Solana had 2.3 million active addresses. Pretty good. Near is not far behind. A 2 million, Polygon, 1 million, Base, Ton, Ethereum, Cardano, 32,000. That's awful. Uh, maybe they should get some more bots or something. And Polygon, 3.7. Daily transactions, however, take a look at this. It's pretty big. You got Solana at 40 million daily transactions. That's a lot. Near 6.3, base 3.6, Polygon 3.1, Ethereum 1, 938, 37, again for Cardano, ZKVM. So we're looking at a lot of transactions. Now what I want to take a look at is the fees. Does it really add up? So let's see. So fees, and again, you have to add up pretty much all these in. So Solana, 2.1 million. But I mean, they had a lot of transactions, did they not? So if you have, I don't know, what it was, 8X of the transactions or something like that, correct me in the comments, that's a lot to have, to generate that much revenue. Ethereum, 1.8, base, 110,000. Again, I mean, the fees are so low, it makes no sense. Ton, 55,000, pretty good. Ton's very fast. Near protocol, 19,000. See, that's another thing. If you take a look at this near protocol, they had a lot of transactions, but very few revenue. So what does that tell you? One's really damn cheap. Polygon, Cardano, a whopping 6,000. And Polygon, $203. Watch out. So again, I'm not here to guide you in any way and to, you know, to have you come to or make you come to your conclusion. You do the research. You take a look at Artemis. And you can add in anything you want. You can add in all different types of of layer ones, twos, threes. I don't even know there's layer fours now. I, I have no idea. And just take a look at it and uh, make the own distinction for yourself. So anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments. And then also there was this, there's been this information kind of circulating around. And uh, I really wanted to talk about it, but I had to wait because I didn't know if this was going to pan out to be correct. And it is, but it, it's not. So this was this has been circulating. Uh, Zia, well, oh, I think I said it right. Nailed it. It says breaking. The SEC amends their lawsuit against Binance. Solana, Ada, Matic, 
Filecoin, Adam Sand, blah, 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 are no longer securities. Another good news for the crypto community. And what they're referencing here is the SEC's proposal where it says, the SEC informed defendants, the SEC informed defendants, Binance, that intends to seek leave to amend its complaints with respect to third-party crypto asset securities, essentially saying, okay, we're just going to give it to you, right? And I was like, that's great. And then, but I'm not a lawyer. I don't really know. So I had to wait for Jake Chervinsky. And he states, where's Jake from? Let's see. Ah, oh, there he is. Uh, Chief Legal Officer of Variant Fund, Board at Fund DeFi, Blockchain Association, Compound Finance. I'm also a lawyer, so, you know, Chief Legal Officer. So I would think that his his comment would have a certain gravitas about what the situation actually is. And Jake says, look, there's no reason to think the SEC has decided Seoul is a non-security. I would assume he's talking about also all of them. That they don't want to do discovery on a dozen tokens in the Binance case appears to be a litigation tactic, not a change in policy. So again, it's always best to wait sometimes, most times, almost every time to get the story right. Here we go. Note the SEC still calls these tokens securities and the other exchange cases. So... I know I'd like to celebrate too and, you know, roll this stuff out, but, uh, you know, got to be as accurate as you possibly can. So kind of a win, kind of not. Looks like Gary's taking another big fat L and that's fine. And then uh, also, lastly, and then we'll get into the uh, Q&A. I just want to, this is going off into the, the, the far side of altcoins, we will say, uh, hamster combat. And I've talked about this many a time on the show. I believe that uh, TonCoin is going to be, uh, well, it's already in the top 10 for Pete's sakes. It's doing pretty well. But uh, there was this, this game that I've been talking about that you could just do mining. We've been talking about this like two months and they're close to having their airdrop and it was free. It just was a little bit of, info, little bit of time that you had to put in and we'll see how it works out. But what I like about this one, and they just put this out this morning, they said, we, we firmly believe that each player contributes to our shared success. To reflect this, we've allocated, look at, check this out, a whopping 60% of the total token supply for community distribution. And they actually put out their uh, white paper. And uh, I'll link in the description. But what we're looking at here, and, and I, I like this part where they say here, for the tokenomics, 60% of the airdrops volume will be dedicated to the players. So essentially going to all the, all the community. And they state, since we have neither investment firms nor VCs backing us, there is no extra sell pressure. And a community-driven token, its value will be determined by demand, supply, and community interest. I explained why this token will be big, why the other ones on token, on ton, the open network will be enormous. And I put a video out, whoops, that's not it, right here. There's a link in the description, you can check that out. So uh, again, ton's gonna be, and the different things in the ecosystem should be big. And when I was at the Bitcoin conference, everybody that I talked to were like, no, Solana and meme coins are going to be huge and layer two is going to be big. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, I have my thesis and they have theirs. We'll see who works out. And then lastly, I just want to remind everybody that uh, my buddy Tom Crown is going to have a live stream where he's going to be doing the uh, Fed chair. Jerome Powell is going to speak. And then maybe we get a, uh, a rate cut. I sincerely doubt it. But... Some people have said it's going to happen tomorrow. So we'll see. And uh, I linked this in the description for tomorrow. We'll all meet up over there and bombard Tom on his live stream. And that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to go over, uh, do a little Q&A, which we should have made that shorter. Do that right now. But if you got to take off, take off. Thanks, everybody.